Hey, good morning, everyone. Pastor Jacobson here with another morning devotion. Today's morning devotion is going to be quick. Please forgive me for the brevity of all this, but uh, with a delayed start with school and having to get our kids to school a little bit later, and also with the high winds right now, we're, I'm constantly trying to clear the driveway and keep it clear. Um, so I had about a four foot drift in front of the garages this morning, so I needed to move those quickly. And I'm gonna have to probably do it again here in just a moment to be able to get out of our garage, okay? So um, that's just kind of how it is today, but we are gonna get into this real fast. Good morning, Tiffany. We are gonna go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 13. We are going to verse 44. As I said, this is gonna be quick. I got one main thing that I wanna hit, and then we're gonna send you on for your day, okay? So Matthew 13, verse 44, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Oftentimes we look at parables like this and we again try to put ourselves in the parable. I oftentimes though encourage people to take a look at the parables by taking themselves out of the equation. And right here, I would recommend putting Jesus back in the equation. That Jesus is the man who literally goes and sells everything he has, including his life, his, his self, in order for uh, to purchase the great treasure that he finds, which is you. A lot of times people say, no, this is the Christian going and getting rid of everything that they have to go find Jesus. But remember, St. Paul says that we are dead in our sins and trespasses. And as I always say, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a lot of dead people doing a whole lot in their life, right? Jesus has, has to find us first. So let's go down to 45. Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. You're about to see maybe one of my cats here. Sorry about that. Um, when it was full, men, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the finer, fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I preached a sermon on this, and you could go back and try to find it somewhere back in August or September, I think. I don't know. It might have been earlier than that. Um, but one thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to this parable in particular is that the Greek word here is not fish. They cast the net into the water, and it catches all kinds of things. All right. So when you drag net fish, if you ever watch like a greatest catch or deadliest catch or any of these type of things, right? Whatever gets in those pots, whatever gets in those nets, it's coming in, right? That means it could be a rusty, clanky anchor. It could be a uh, message in a bottle. It could be all sorts of different things. And it could be huge fish. It could be sharks. It could be whales. It could be a nasty crocodile. Who knows where you're fishing, right? But the idea is the net of God goes into the entire world and brings all sorts of things into it. But who decides the value of the things at the end? You know, it's not about us trying to make it about, well, maybe we would just sort it out by the big fish get kept and the little fish aren't worthwhile or the pretty fish get kept, but the ugly fish, you know, the groupers get thrown back in. It has nothing to do with the appearance of the things. It has everything to do with what the master has set as a priority, which very well mean that you might be the biggest, crustiest, rusty anchor in the entire world, and yet God finds value in you, okay? So the value is set by him and not by our standards. And at the end, the last day, Everything is sorted out for what it is, where God sees the value or not. And it boils down ultimately to the faith in the Son, Jesus Christ. Did you believe or did you not? Let's continue on. Verse 51. Have you understood all these things? And the disciples said to him, yes. I actually kind of think that sometimes the disciples might have been leading Jesus on a little bit. He knew it. I don't think they really understood a lot of this. 
um, at least not immediately. That's why they have to ask him for clarification time and time again. Oh, here comes the cat. Sorry about that. All right. Anyway, um, it is funny. The disciples are sitting there like, yeah, we're sitting here like, do we really understand it? Uh, who knows what's going on there? But Jesus said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there and coming to his hometown, Nazareth, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not, and he did not do many mighty works there, because of their unbelief. So real quick, just one last thing here, especially on this last section, a prophet is not without honor except in their, his hometown. This is oftentimes why it's very difficult for pastors to be called back to their home place. Um, it's uh, nobody likes uh, to be taught or sometimes if necessary by the law, kind of chastised for their behavior or whatnot by somebody that they used to change diapers on, right? Um, and sometimes we get this, even if you're not in your own hometown, sometimes we despise the youth of pastors or whatnot. I've had it happen to me before. Uh, all these things that go out there. But uh, the reason that oftentimes this is, is because people look at the pastor differently. They had a different relationship with that person beforehand. Sometimes it does work. I'm not saying that it doesn't always, uh, but oftentimes we don't actually see it working out very well. So when Jesus goes back to his hometown, even though he's doing and teaching and people recognize, they said, hey man, he's wise, but where did he really get this, right? Is he showing off? That's kind of their mentality. Their unbelief stems from a fact that they don't want to be one up by Jesus, even though Jesus isn't one upping them. Jesus is really just proclaiming the truth to them. So I guess kind of breaking down that last section, um, maybe it's not so much that when we start to think, oh man, this person's too smart for us, or I don't get it, or I don't understand it, and maybe I don't want to hear it because of that. Maybe it's not so much that the other person is smart or even even arrogant. I think sometimes confidence and, and, and smartness can look, or intelligence, I'm sorry, it's an early morning already, guys. It can be viewed as, as arrogance. Um, maybe we have to reflect more on our ignorance and how do you fix that if somebody's wise does it matter who it really comes from such as age or the like so long as you're learning and growing right because if you're not growing you're remaining in ignorance so some things to think about there just kind of recapping when we look at the parables of the fields um, Jesus is the one who goes and purchases the great field. He literally purchases us with everything he has, his very blood itself, his life, because he finds great value in us, even though we're sinners. Remember, Jesus even said, and we, we talked about this a while ago, he even, our father even knows the number of hairs on our heads. That's more than I care to know about anyone, <laughs> but he knows. Second thing to think about is that he's the one who establishes what's valuable, especially in our modern day and age. Let's be cautious about trying to decide what's valuable and what's not. We are very much, and I think this is unfortunate in our society today, and I think it's mainly because we're so consumeristic bent. We like things and we like to buy things and we like more things. I'm the same. I got lots of books. I like books. I like to read. But 
sometimes we set value based on usefulness. What is utilitarian for ourselves? We especially do this with life at the beginning and at the end. But remember, it's God that decides what is truly useful and what he uses. And to take it one step further, note that almost always, almost always, not always, but almost, throughout the whole scripture, God uses the weakest, the smallest, and the most least likely people to accomplish his task and will. So before we start assigning values on life and what it can and can't do or what it can and can't be, let's remember that he even purchased us when we were still enemies with him. That's the book of Hebrews for you. So that's your morning devotion. I know it was quick, all those good things, but I got to get back out there, start moving snow again. We'll see how... Uh, we'll see how it goes getting the kids to school this morning. So uh, I will probably be tied up for a little bit trying to get all that done. I might not be available till this afternoon. Uh, depending on how the roads are as we go to get the kids to school, I may or may not be making visits this afternoon. You get it. It is what it is out here with the wind. Uh, I've never seen an inch of snow become four foot, but it, that's exactly what happens out here uh, because the drifts get crazy. So let's go ahead and close with a quick word of prayer, and we're going to send you on for your day. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have established a great value and worth in us that's far beyond what we are worth in your sight. In fact, we were worth so much that you sent your son to die for us that we might live with you forever. Help us always to treasure that gift and help us lead others to see the truth and the light of what you have done for us. Heavenly Father, I pray that this day you be with all those who are traveling and on the roads in our communities, that you keep them safe, that you keep them safe to and from their destinations, and also in their later travels. We pray that you continue to be with our members of our police forces, our EMTs and firefighters that will help people this day who might be stranded on the sides of the road, and that you keep all in safety. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, good morning, Joanne and Vicki. Hope you're all having a great day. I know we weren't able to get everybody on because I had to start this early, but the great thing is it's going to be uploaded for anybody to watch later. So hopefully you are able to tune in. We will check with you tomorrow at 9, hopefully. Hopefully it stops blowing enough that I can sit down and do a normal morning devotion. God bless your day, and we will see you tomorrow at 9.